Yo, 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 what's up, YouTube? Dirty Dan Gaming coming back with another Rise of Kingdoms video. And today we are continuing our Commander Overview series. Now, just a reminder that these are a little bit more geared for the beginner players. They are some of the older generation commanders. The way that we're building up the channel here at Dirty Dan Gaming is we have started from KVK1 commanders and kind of moving forward. So our last Wheel of Fortune commander that we covered was Genghis Khan, and we will be covering the next commander in that sequence. So let's jump into him. All right, so here we are, the next commander that you will encounter in your Wheel of Fortune sequence right after Genghis Khan. You will get the man, the myth, the legend, Alexander the Great. He is an infantry versatility and attack commander. And I believe other than for legendaries, at least, he is going to be the first attack tree infantry commander that you get in Rise of Kingdoms, which is very nice. The attack tree is one of the best trees in the game. So, as always, we are going to give a determination at the end of the video if he is worth investing looking ahead to your Season of Conquest gameplay. Just a small reminder that you will probably enter Season of Conquest about a year into gameplay of Rising Kingdoms. You do have to finish three KVKs um, until you get to Season of Conquest. Now that timeline might be a little bit shorter because I know that they have been tweaking the initial kvk that you have i know that's about 60 ish days now instead of 90 days and they have reduced the time in between kvks if you do choose so as a kingdom so that time that time frame may be a little bit off but just as a general guide it will take almost about a year to get into season of conquest gameplay so let's check out his skills and see if he is worthy for that investment looking ahead to your kvk season four First skill, Shield of the King. Alexander gains a shield that lasts four seconds, which can absorb a large amount of damage, damage factor up to 1200, and at the same time puts a smaller shield for the allied troops, including his own troops, with the lowest percentage of units in a circular area of effect. The smaller one lasts two seconds and absorbs a small amount of damage, damage factor 600. So, just as a quick glance view, this is a pretty good skill very similar to what you get with Charles Martel, although slightly less powerful in terms of your own shield that you're getting, but he makes up for that by also buffing your alliance mates with an additional shield that lasts for two seconds. Anytime you get a skill that is helping your alliance members is always a good thing. And that's kind of why I was a little upset when I saw in the Facebook Rise of Kingdoms group that some people were saying that Alexander was not worth the investment. And I just, I almost lost my mind because again, he's doing things that help your alliance mates out. And you should always be, you should always want more of those commanders on the field whenever possible. So when I, when I saw that, I just almost lost it. I almost went on a rant on Facebook, which I don't usually do. I don't like to be a keyboard warrior, but um, that almost, that triggered me a little bit. Next skill, lead the charge. While on the map, troops led by this commander are immune to all damage reduction debuffs, and their normal attacks have a 10% chance to deal an additional damage to the target. Damage factor 1700, and reduce its healing effects by 30% for 5 seconds. So, a lot going on in this skill here. Um, I really love the fact that it is not being troop specific. So anytime you see this wording, troops led by this commander, that will mean that it's any type of troop unless they're specifying that infantry units led by this commander or cavalry units led by this commander unless they specify that exact wording troops led by this commander is going to work for all commanders which is another reason why i feel alexander has a lot of value because you can mix and match him with different troop type commanders which is what i did in my kvk season two by pairing my Alexander up with Genghis Khan. The second reason why I did that is because they are immune to all damage reduction debuffs. You're getting that buff for any troop type. So I guess it's still the first reason. Um, but in KVK2, you're still seeing a lot of Richards on the field. 
So I wanted to aid the fact that I was going to be getting debuffed on my damage side. And with Khan being one of the more um, kind of new forward commanders early on, I wanted to prevent the damage reduction debuffs that Richards were throwing out. Additionally, he's going to give you a chance to proc a 1700 damage factor skill with um, nuke, which is very nice, and then reduce its healing effects by 30% for five seconds. Um, this is also kind of geared towards that counter of Richard. If you guys didn't see my Saladin video, I'll leave a card up on the top, but I did talk about that shortly. How Saladin and I feel like Alexander came out in order to kind of counter Richard. Because Richards, when you when KVKs were first a thing and Richard was kind of that prime time commander, he was so hard to kill. And I think that the healing effect reductions that you get from Saladin as well as Alexander were the answers that Lilith were trying to provide for the players in order to kind of um, aid them a little bit in taking out Richards in the fields. Also, a very key thing about this skill, while on the map, this means that your troops have to either be in a rally or on the field fighting. This skill does not work whatsoever when you are in garrison. I have tested it. Check it out. I'll show you real quick on this garrison portion right here. That that you will not see an active skill trigger at all. So this effect, this skill does not affect when you're in garrison, much like this third skill, frontline commander. While on the map, infantry units led by this commander gain 25% increased march speed and 25% oh, up to 30% increased march speed and 30% increased attack. 30% march speed is very nice, especially for infantry units because them boys is slow. The attack is okay. It is what it is. Early in the game, yes, it's awesome, especially for your KVK2. Um, and especially for the fact that Alexander is like the rally meta in KVK2 with Alex YSG or Alex Martel. Next skill before the expertise, Battle of Sharonea. Uh, when not shielded, troops led by this commander gain up to 40% increased attack. And when shielded, troops gain up to 30% increased defense instead. So again, we're seeing this troops led by this commander phrase. So that means even if you have him with a Genghis Khan and cavalry units, those cavalry units are going to be getting a 40% increased boost when his shield is not up. And when the shield goes up, they're going to be getting the 30% increased defense. So you can see there's so much versatility here with Alexander. Again, it just kind of blows my mind that people said that he wasn't worth the investment anymore. And this is the final reason why I think that he is worth the investment for Season of Conquest. We'll give an early two thumbs up. I usually wait until everything's all done, but um, we give him the, the dirty two thumbs up. Um, this guy is definitely worth investing in and i believe that this is the primary reason why because his expertise is going to give you right over here okay nothing nothing else is going to change about his expertise he's just getting this added little line right here during the effect of the shield up to three enemy troops in a circular area take 30 percent increased damage for four seconds that is huge we've seen a debuff in one of our generation one commanders with minamoto where he is giving a, a chance to give a 30 percent debuff to the enemy this is all the time whenever that active skill pops off you are going to be debuffing enemy marches for 30 percent increased damage that is so huge so huge you almost because of the skill for me personally I, I almost try and target Alexander's a little bit more often than I think 
other people do. I know we should usually go like, um, you should usually go for your high nukers and then the debuffers. Um, I just, I, I don't like the fact that when I see a bunch of Alex's on the field that my alliance mates are being affected by it and we're effectively taking more damage. Anytime you're taking more damage is a bad thing. Anytime you're giving more damage is a good thing, obviously. Um, but this is, this is like one of the, the primary reasons why I think he is a must have commander in your lineups, especially for Season of Conquest. And especially with the commanders that come out after um, Alexander Guan Yu comes out. We now have CJ who comes out, Harold. Those are all amazing combinations to have with this commander. So yes, you do want to go ahead and work on him and expertise him as you can see here. As you guys know who follow who've been following the channel, I am a super min-max on Cav right now. You can see I really haven't used many sculpts for him. This 112 is the only thing I invested into him to make him a 5511 for our KVK2, so I had a little bit more options. But as you can see, most of it came from I think like a wheel or two, and then mostly from the daily from the daily bundles. So yes, he is worth maxing. And I think that you you will get a lot of value out of him. Um, as time goes on, he you just can pair him with so many different commanders, and so many of these skills are usable with any type of troop, all besides one, actually. All of his skills work with any unit type besides his third skill that is just infantry specific. So I would definitely say go ahead and work on this commander. If you are not an infantry main, you're going to have to make that call again if you didn't catch my saladin video i kind of touched on this a little bit with both of these commanders i think you can you can pick one or the other early in the game and then decide what which way you want to go later in the game very much of what i did i invested into saladin i dumped a i dumped some of my a good amount of my sculpts into him okay almost 300 and that made him a 5551. That made him instantly usable. And I used him with um, with YSG. Now, at the time, I didn't have the sculpts because I'm, I was gearing up for KBK2 and I wanted Khan and Saladin. If I could go back, I probably would have, I probably would not have Max Khan and Max Alex. I would still be using him up to this day. Um, so I'm still kind of keeping my fingers crossed that we get a, a nice support calf commander or a defense calf commander, but we'll see. So when it comes to deciding what commanders you're going to be maxing in your KVK2, I do kind of want to leave that up to you guys and kind of, it, it really depends on the type of player you are, the, the type of troop types that you want to focus in. But again, he does get the two thumbs up. I think that he is worth the investment. If he takes a little bit more time than some of your other, other commanders, then that's fine. But it's definitely a commander that you want to work on and one that you should invest in. So with that, we're going to wrap up the video. I hope this was helpful. And I just want to thank everyone for all of the support um, that we have been getting lately. It has been absolutely amazing. We had one of our best streams yesterday. And um, we're going to look to continue that. We have KVK coming up um, in literally, I think, a day. We're going to be dropping into the map. And next week, we will have the first passes opening. So stay tuned for that. And if you guys enjoyed the content, please consider slapping a like on the video. Consider subscribing down below. All of it is totally free and helps the channel out a lot. And if you guys want to talk about anything else, leave a comment down below. With that, 3 Day Gaming, I'm out. Enjoy your week. Have a good one, everyone. Peace.